This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Oh, another day, another dollar. Let's go see what we got going on today. Look at that. There we go. All right, well, we're gonna go see what we got going on here with this uh, freezer and we'll go from there with it. It is in defrost. It must be in hot gas defrost. That's probably why it's not doing so well. Look at that evaporator coil there. It's all block of ice. That's not too impressive. So we've got hot on the liquid line. Suction, I can barely get to it. Let's go upstairs and see what's going on. I'm not too overly impressed with these master built units. Just have a lot of problems out of these. Leaks and everything else bees all over it must have a nest in there somewhere you can see that suction line which theoretically should be hot it's frosted up this is some of the best stuff i've seen it'll drop them one speck gets on them they drop so boom the two of them they both hit the ground dead almost immediately this little sucker here if I can get him to land and we'll take him out next. I haven't done many of these particular ones. I mean, obviously it's a heat pump style design. I wonder if we got a crappy uh, person though. in defrost still I do not like this as well as I do the and now we don't have any stinking control no no buttons this is the problem I had last time no manual for it like I said it's it's still in cooling mode that's what we got going on here trying to find a manual is the problem we got right now may need to just call the factory and see if I can get the dang manual for this thing Touching the bottom of this, it's very hot. So it's obviously truly in defrost. That valve up there, I gotta find out whether it's normally powered for cooling or whether it's powered for uh, defrost. I mean, it is shutting off the fan, it's energizing the heater cores. Now we just gotta find out how is that reversing valve supposed to go? If it's supposed to be energized for cooling and not for defrost, it means it's working, so to speak. It's powered right, but the valve's not shifting. Okay, on the waiting list there with master bill, which is a real great time. So I went ahead and looked at our diagram that I didn't know we had in here. And if you look at it, we have a drain heater coming down to a 24 volt transformer, which then feeds three and four, which then comes up here to the reversing coil. We have no voltage on three and four. So we must have a transformer issue or something like that, or a wire issue. So we need to figure out what's going on down there. If, that's tied on, like I said, to the drain heater. So if that drain heater, drain pan heater, is energized, which we call heat, we should have 24 volts up here. That means that's energized during defrost, which means it should be powered for, for a defrost. Well, our problem might lie right there. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a picture of three and four so we can compare it downstairs so we know what color is what. There's that other one right there. As I said, still waiting on hold. You gotta love that stuff. Okay, we have 15 ohms on the coil, so the coil's fine. Wow, that thing's vibrating like crazy. That's gonna be your next leak right there. So we found the transformer. It's mounted right here on the end. There's the limit switch, but it doesn't look like it's actually in line with that. You have a high voltage coming off of H1 and H2, going straight to the transformer, and then goes to three and four. So as soon as I can figure out how to put this thing into a freaking defrost, because here's what you got. It says switch one, switch two. That's it. No how to put it into a defrost or nothing. No next, no up, down, no programming it, no nothing. There you go. That shut your little butt down, didn't it? Let's see if this thing starts out in a defrost by chance. That'd be kind of nice. Or I'm sorry. Backwards. 
you see that? No? It's going the right way. Those are different motors. Looks like we found it here. All right, for you guys out there, press switch one for seven seconds and it'll go into defrost. So, now we got in defrost, now we come over here and check our voltages and see if we got voltage over to it. Okay, so we got our meter going. We should have power. Let's switch one and two which we do have 205 volts on, make sure that's right. We do, so let's go to three and four, see if we got power on three and four. Still no power on that. Orange wire is coming down here to H1. And the black wire is coming down to that one. So yeah, our problem is the transformer junk. We just need to replace that transformer. Yep, 206 volts. So we just need to get that stupid thing out of there. Kill power to this turkey and this new transformer. I think that's a horrible location for a transformer inside here, but I don't know if there's anything special about that transformer. But I can tell you, all I've got is what I've got, so that's what we're going to stick in there. All right, I don't probably recommend doing this live like I'm doing, but I unplugged the transformer high voltage first, got it unplugged. Now I've got the other one, it's got nice insulated terminals. Got it on there. And now for the high voltage, which we're gonna shove those on real carefully so we don't short nothing on that. So let's go ahead and hook one up to H1. Back out, and we should hear a squish. Ah, it changed, changed pitch. It should start reverse. It sounds like it reversed. All I had was a regular total line transformer, which was 12208 and 230 volt, which I plugged in there. And we got that mounted there. We just tied off our extra legs, which we'll wire tie that up here in a little bit. Everything's good there. Love the wire, the wires they left laying dangling. Let's see if we got 24 volts now on three and four. We do have 24 volts there on three and four. Praise Jesus. There we go. We'll see it again. Boom. Look at that. Good deal. And we'll let this thing start, but I have a bad feeling that we're going to have to manually melt this thing, unfortunately. And we're going to have to be fairly careful with those stupid motors that are more efficient because they're going to get wet and then probably go bad. And looking at that transformer right now with those crappy looking crimps with punch downs that they use for a non-insulated, looks to me like they used a regular transformer, pretty much just like I did and it probably lasted for a while. Get water in it like that, probably gonna have an issue, but yeah, that's what we got. I am not seeing any melting going on. I haven't been up on the roof yet. I have a bad feeling it's not doing it. What a piece of junk. I, I, why do you gotta put all this fancy shit in here? I wanted to scan to see if we had a leak, cause I know we had a leak not too long ago. Maybe the transformer's going bad. And there's a short in that coil up there, could be. I can hear some compressor kicking on and off. It could be going off on whatever. Yep, still got 24 volts. So the solenoid's reversed, but if there's any issues up there, the pressure switch could be shutting it down. Now let's look what we got going on here. This line here is hot, so it is going in on the, what you consider the suction line. It's not like blazing hot. See if we can get any leaks up there on the. We normally wouldn't want to make a repair like that there. The vibration is really bad, likely to break again. But it's just a matter of time till this other dump valve here right there breaks. The expansion valve down there is not opening up more because I mean we're obviously not getting much melting going on here. It's freezing up. I love the cap that's missing there on that other one there. Coming up and eventually make its way back out through here. 
nest under there. Cause look at all them guys that are dead. I didn't kill all them. They must just walk right into the booby trap there and just killed themselves. See, there's another idiot. Something's down there that's uh, uh, making him want to go down there. And then they get into it and then they get, Oop. sorry guy. I usually wouldn't say kill them, but you know, I'm not getting stung. Honeybees, whatever. I hate doing that to them because I know they're kind of endangered and all that, or well, soon to be. You can see, here's some more up here. Hanging out. I am missing with them unless I miss them with me, but they're in my area and I know they get mad. I don't think that thing's even melting. I mean, it hasn't even melted the frost off these. I mean, a little bit, but not enough to impress me. I, I'm gonna have to get the garden hose out and melt this and then we'll deal with it after that. I had another compressor to change this morning. I don't see that happening right away. And look, that suction line, well, that's your liquid line there. That's probably why they got insulated too. This, this should be hot gas line coming down. That should be melted. We've probably got other issues. We could have all kinds of potential issues and it's really hard to tell what exactly is going on. Okay, you want to melt the bottom down here first because if you don't, sometimes it'll run over the edge. So, and you want to stay away from the sensors because you want it to stay in defrost as long as possible. Just kind of got to watch your water flow because that drain will overflow pretty easy. But it seems like I've been doing this a lot lately. Luckily, it's frosty. Um, it's not solid ice. I mean, it's <laughs> It's frosty all right. I mean, it's very frosty, but it definitely is not solid ice, thank goodness. So it's melting rather quickly uh, for being two inches thick. Don't forget, we gotta get the other side too, because this is the easy side. The other side's gonna take longer, unfortunately. We'll get her. All right, so we got this back side here. Now we gotta get to front side. Yeah, we're gonna have to pull the fan blades, to definitely get into them easier. All right, it kicked in. I don't know if it had a drip time at all, but my yeah, golly, it kicked in like, mm, instantly kicked on, about took finger off. These have removable blades, these don't. Uh, that's a plastic bracket, that's metal bracket. So this has been somehow engineered to work with that. So, yeah, no matter what, I'm gonna have to try to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle back in behind there and try to get that melted. What's kind of nice with this head is I can actually get it back behind here and not have to yank these blades because I don't know how you can yank the blades anyway. I don't know if they pop off or what, but what I can tell you is, is I'm not having to. I have a little bit of an issue. No, nope, no, nope, we're good. We'll get this right here. There we go. Should I keep that? None of it's getting in the motor, so we're good. We got her all down, but I don't know why it hasn't kicked out yet. It still says 71. It's definitely coming through hot. You can feel it now plain as day on that suction line, which is now your hot gas. But yeah, we're getting a little bit of little haze going on. Okay, we got that wire tied. Nothing can drip onto the transformer. I think it's a horrible place for it. We're gonna check, see if we can find out anything on that programming, termination temperature, stuff like that yet. Yeah, it's still going out, hot gas. We need to find out if that's why they had that limit switch on there, I don't know. Uh, that limit switch would break that. That would shut that out of default. But it terminated on its own before. Yeah, the heater limit might be a fail safe because then that's gonna kick it out of defrost. Um, and it's gonna bring it out. But otherwise it should be done by the board. At least that's how every time I've ever seen it. I'm gonna have to return it real quick. Okay, we're at 77. We got some issues here. Let's give old snifferoo up in here. Yeah, I gotta read about that and see what its termination temperature is, but you're not gonna have a hard time picking it up in here with this being, like I said, hot gas, so we're running high pressure. Well, you would think, maybe not, because I still don't understand how that did it with like the, the, the 
the volume it's got going on, the pressure seems way too low. And it's possible I accidentally reset the board when I sit in some of the buttons, not knowing what I was doing. So we gotta recheck some of these things. Right now it's a CD, which means coil drain mode, so it's draining down. Why wouldn't you just put the sticker in the freaking panel? It's a bunch of crap. They kept showing RO a bunch too. I've been going through the book, figuring out what some of our settings are here, because I defrost them like it went way too high. So got the definition of a few things written out. I'm gonna print the book when I have a chance. But we're watching to see how it does this time. If it terminates a little sooner than it did the last time, because we were at 70 something before. And it also showed where the sensors were located, things like that. Pretty much if there's any issues with it, it should have told me about it. You've got one sensor, two sensors. You should have two sensors back here. One on the suction line. And then you've got another one for termination. There's one up there on the distributor. So I think that was the termination. Obviously the suction is going to be for the superheat. So yeah, it's very similar to um, the, the beacon system, but you know, it's made by Sporlin. So I'm going to see if I can't scroll through here and see a few things. Okay, so we went through here and we've set everything up. It's complicated. Without the manual, there's no way you could do this. Uh, I set a termination of 55 instead of the 80 degrees that it was terminating at, so that's the reason why it ran forever. Also had a maximum run time of defrost of 45 minutes, which with hot gas, it should never be that long. I think I just heard it kick out right there. We're already starting to come back down. Hopefully we don't regret doing that, but made some other adjustments. So here is those lists, but the problem is SS, which is superheat, or suction saturation, I forget which one that one was. If you don't know what they are, it does you no good. So you gotta have that main master list. All right, so we've got good airflow out of all of them. Looks like we're at 30. I got it set for negative five. Let's stay under zero, should make everybody happy. Okay, so we're looking around over here. We do have some bubbles. This does not have a receiver though. They say right in their manual, don't overcharge it. Make sure your superheat is following along, get your presets, check your superheat, which we're running plenty of superheat coming back to the compressor, we're at 37. This is kind of surprising it's that high, because down there at the controller, it's uh, about seven area. It's up to 10, so it fluctuates a little bit. I'm not gonna add anything to it. Superheat's where it's at, it's already dropped the temp. Uh, I think we were at 18 degrees already from 45 or something. As I take my gauges off, just went into a defrost. You can see it. It's come back warm. I did check the programming. 60 degrees is the factor default. So I had it at 55. That's where most of them usually are at for like a mechanical. Uh, since it was 80 before, I went ahead and set it at 65 just to be safe. Hate changing things too much and then come back for something else. We're gonna watch it for a minute here. Just started the clock. It shouldn't run for very long. Maximum time at the default was 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm not overly impressed, but it thinks we're at 27. That should start going up pretty quick. We are at eight minutes so far. But yeah, not horrible, but We'll watch her for a sec. Hopefully it'll start shooting up real fast. No longer, no quicker than I said that. Boom, instantly going down. Uh, so that was right at about eight minutes. Uh, I got a drip delay. I think I moved that up to four minutes. So it'll let it drain for at least four minutes. Uh, they said five for some. It's kind of confusing which unit's which, but you can see how fast that number there is dr uh, dropping. I'm hoping that is the actual number of the coil while it's in the defrost because the room temperature is definitely not 36 in here. So, yeah. That's not good. All right, we had to adjust that one more time. It was just tinging before. I don't know, these things have been tore apart so many times, nothing's back in the right order. All right, so the little D and little N means uh, the defrost sensor. You can see how fast we're coming up, 57. We're gonna hit 65, default was 60. I went ahead and went 60 instead of the 
80 they had, that fan in the middle, even though it didn't look like nothing's hitting, something was hitting. So that delay it takes for it to finally get back to that temperature should kick out again. I didn't want to leave and have it trigger again. We're 61. And usually once you're thawed, it'll start jumping up really fast. And just the amount of time, they're 63, so it should kick out here in a second. You'll hear click, there's 64. Should be about now. There's 65. 66. I think, yep. I think I just heard a change. Okay, so now you're seeing a DN, I think it's drain. Yep, coil drain. Coil drain mode. So we're giving it four minutes there at that, which in this case here is fine. It does have another delay, which is the fan delay. So that's the traditional one that you'd be used to. Should kick on here. This is what it did. It would, it would make noises. And there also when it would make the crazy noise. So luckily, no noise. Good, all fans are running. I'm out of here, guys. I wanna say a big thank you to all of my subscribers out there, the ones that have been with me since the beginning and all the new ones that have just came along. Without you guys, I have no reason to make these videos and your feedback is greatly appreciated. So, that being said, until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later. If you guys waited to the very last minute, Put, uh, pud. If you guys waited to the very end, put Master Built down in the description. I'll know who actually watches to the end. Later.